for week two of the Pokemon Premier League. Now then, in week two, I actually was up against um, Fufu, whom I don't think I actually got to battle him in season one of the Pokemon Premier League. Uh, and of course, he is the coach of the Newcastle New United. Uh, going into this, I think I was actually in the power rankings at... I would think I was last. I would guess that I was last, just based on how the first power ranking video went. And uh, he had to have been in the first or second slot there. I think he was first for one person and second for another. But that's not the point. He was near the top. I was at the bottom. And uh, this battle was so important for me to have. Um, I didn't play well. I prepared pretty well. And I, I really needed this battle in order to reset my thinking, not only about Pokemon, but this is just one of those times where you have a battle and it's like, man, you know, I just really need to, to take a step back. But let's go over my team here. I'll get more into the details of that later on. With the Bomb of Snow, I just went um, minus speed, nature, and mixed. With the Bomb of Snow, Zagard, and Chandelure, and to a lesser extent, Caesar and Rotom, I went with lower, uh, less speed because I didn't think I could out speed or out prioritize this team for the most part. And I went for a lot more bulk. Uh, my plan was to kind of chip away at this team overall and then set up a trick room and try to sweep either with a Bomb of Snow or. Uh, Zygarde. Um, I did go with a weird Chandelure set with Substitute Pain Split, Shadow Ball, and Flamethrower uh, with the modest nature in order to, I just had enough speed to outspeed Nidoqueen and then everything else was in HP in order to take advantage of Trick Room because most of his Pokemon would be faster than mine. Uh, Metal Coat Caesar in order just to bluff the Choice Band and then switch up Moose and Roost if I needed to. Defensive Rotom almost purely to check Talonflame because Talonflame kind of destroys my team on its own without Rotom. And um, with Slacking, I had some really nice EV investments. I had enough in there in order to live um, a banded, or rather two, a good, have a good chance of living uh, a banded U-turn um, after taking Stealth Rocks and switching in and taking Toxic Spike. I had all these preliminary ideas in, in play in my head. Uh, but the main reason was I wanted to be sure to be able to take any hit from Talonflame even after taking a bunch of Inchi Hazards then set up a trick room. That was the idea. So Slacking, or rather not Slacking, Slow King could take any hit here and set up trick room and retaliate, allowing uh, even Coil Zygarde to set up, which after a Coil, Zygarde kind of rips his team apart if I can get some prior damage in there. So that's kind of how I went into this battle thinking. Unfortunately, on the same day of this battle, I just had a lot of personal stuff uh, bogging me down, and it really affected my thinking in this battle, and you're going to see that happen. So let's just get started here. Now, so now in this battle, I did start off with Chandelure. Um, he knew that I wasn't Scarf because of his Frisk ability, but I didn't think he would be. I saw that he was small sized. I'm just going to pause it really fast. I saw that he was small sized and that that would be likely that he had some speed investment, probably at least enough to outrun, you know, something like Scarf, Chandelure, in case he was Scarf or something weird like that. Because a small size Gorgeist is pretty fast. Now, I did think that I could take any one hit that he went for pretty well. Uh, normally the smaller size ones often invest. They're a little bit bulkier, but mostly they're faster and bulky, not so much on offense, and they can spread Will-O-Wisp or Leech Seed around and be generally annoying. Definitely did not expect Shadow Ball to blow me back right there. In fact, I expected him to switch out thinking, oh, well, he probably out, uh, he might outspeed if he's Tim and unless he just has full speed investment. And even so, if he didn't switch out, I didn't think he would do as much damage as he did. Uh, so I went for Substitute. That was my mind thinking there. My mind thinking, uh, I'm tired, this is after work. Now Substitute was a poor play for a number of reasons. Number one, nothing on his team wants to take a Shadow Ball. He had as much reason here to eliminate Chandelure as I had as much reason to eliminate Gorgeist, because nothing on my team wants to take a Shadow Ball. I, sh I should have known that I would live any move from him, because he is the lower offensive form of Gorgeist. Gorgeist sacrifice some offensive stats if you go for the smaller form, although it does speed it up a good bit. And I should have, I would have been able to easily one-hit KO him, and if he switched out here, what would he switch to? Assault Vest Hariyama? If that comes in, I basically get a free switch into Rotom. So, here the play should have just been Shadow Ball. I, I just wasn't, I wasn't thinking, wasn't in a good headspace. But that's okay. 
you know, you make the bad play on the first of the game, you continue. So I leave Chandelure in here expecting him to, okay, overpredict now. But again, Shadow Ball is the best overall play. And here I go into Abomasto and Mega Evolve, and I actually fail to one-hit KO him with the Ice Shard, which indicates that he has some type of defensive bulk. Um, I had max attack on my Abomasnow, and I figured, since he is a smaller size, if he did that much damage to Chandelure, surely he's not invested in bulk. And so, again, just the poor play overall. I could have gone into um, Zygarde, probably wouldn't have taken very much damage from any of his attacks. And although he would have been threatening the will o -Wisp with the, um, the Leap Seed, I could have coiled up in his face some there, too. Um, an alternative play was to see if he had the Grass-type move, which sometimes Gorgeist does forego. I could have gone into Rotom and then doubled back into my Caesar to see if he had the Grass-type move. Um, I, after losing Chandelure, I really needed Abomasnow as a win condition, and I throw it away. So Fire Blast wipes out my Abomasnow, and now I'm down two Pokemon in two turns, because I'm, I'm just not in the right headspace, not thinking fully. Here I just went for Bullet Punch, because now I'm frustrated with uh, Gorgeis, and I don't want to see it anymore. Um, I just go out into Rotom here, expecting the burn, and if he had Will-O-Wisp, uh, I was also expecting him to just go for Type of Roost. Now that miss on the Hydro Pump there, I had, I really had no reason to not Hydro Pump. I find I, this is when I finally kind of start getting back into the match. I, I was behind several turns there because of my bad mentality in this match. Uh, when you make a bad play, you really have to just get over it. Um, a much more uh, pivotal play would have been you turning on the Talonflame. Then as Talonflame came in, then I could have gone into Rotom instead of bullet punching the Talonflame. Uh, yes, Talonflame would have quad resisted the U-turn, but that would have forced him to burn Rotom either as I went for Hydro Pump or um, either if he had a natural gift using that, or of course the, the alternative is just to switch out. Now this does lead to me missing a Hydro Pump on Hariyama, which is very, very crucial. I would have loved that damage on Hariyama since he is probably a bulkier one, and I'm a fully defensive Rotom. Would have done right around 25 to maybe 30 percent. So I would love that extra damage. Now I'm taking all this extra re damage from the uh, not only from my own hail but from burn. Here I did not want to go out into slow king because I thought that the knockoff was really really obvious. Um, furthermore, I didn't want anything but I really didn't want slow king to lose its leftovers because now based on what he has left, I have a tiny chance of winning, but I have to play a lot smarter. So going out to Caesar here made more sense. Um, not only do I threaten Aerial Ace in this scenario, but I also can just U-turn if he does predict the Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace is actually pretty good coverage against this team. Unfortunately, I do lose the ability to bluff Choice Band at this point as he knocks off my Metal Coat. But uh, the, the Hail is down, so that's good. Um, I am just going to go for Bullet Punch. Aerial Ace would have worked out well there, too, because he does go into Gorgeist. Here I do predict him to go for Roost, but... Because uh, we didn't end up battling on Saturday when I planned, where I had my entire team bred, and I probably spent like an hour trying to find the right Zygarde in my Y version and capturing it, making sure it had good IVs, I did not know this Talonflame did not have an item. So I went for a knockoff, and it does basically negligible damage, which is very, very annoying. Um, really, really, really did not get to battle what I wanted to, just because things didn't work out. And I was, I just was a ball of just like irritation. And before this battle, I actually lost two prior battles. So I was just like, grr, nothing is working out for me. And I was all in this woe is me mindset, just really, really feeling sad for myself. It was pretty, it was pretty um, entertaining in hindsight. And this was all on Valentine's Day, by the way. Probably my most disliked holiday of the year. So I was just not in a good headspace. But there's a lesson from all this to be learned, I assure you. So. As he goes for the roost, I just got some decent damage off there, but he does carry acrobatics, um, which is, that's perfect, because it makes him a free switch into the Caesar. Acrobatics means that he can do that really, really nice damage without worrying about losing his item. So here we see I'm going to have to Volt Switch on Hariyama again. This time I'm just going to go right on in the Slow King here. I don't want to go on to anything else because he could just go for close combat, which is exactly what he does. This is great. Now I get to set up my Trick Room. Um, I know Mega Blastoise can learn Dark Pulse and it will hurt, but um, I did put a little bit of special defense on Rotom so that he couldn't two-hit KO me with Dragon Pulse or Dark Pulse. There I'm just, you know, basically factoring in the flinch. 
Now right here is where I really, really, really needed that extra damage from that Hydro Pump earlier on. We see that Hariyama is at a nice 44% from the Hydro Pump, okay, let's say a minimum roll of 20%. He would have been easily in range of an extreme speed. Now I admit that I also definitely tried to set up much too early. Uh, at plus one, this Zygarde can maybe two it KO Blastoise with Earthquake. Granted, I did put enough special defense onto it to never be one hit KO'd by Blastoise's um, Ice Beam, but that's not taking into account he could have a really, really bulky Nidoqueen, and he could have taken an Earthquake from that too. So uh, I, I tried to set up too early, and I'm really going to regret that now because he has Ice Punch. I knew I could live an Ice Punch because it's Zygarde, but trying to set up this early means that I'm unable to one hit KO him with extreme speed because I missed that stupid hydro pump earlier from the bad switch that put me in that situation in the first place. So now my trick room goes down, my chances of sweeping are basically null and void. I surprisingly live the Dark Pulse from Blastoise and get off a nice amount of damage with U-Turn. Of course, should have just gone for U-Turn in the first place there. Um, the switch was pretty obvious, he didn't really have any reason to stay in there and risk the bullet turn. If I had gone for a U-Turn right there, then not only would I have gotten the switch priority on him, but it would have been at half, could have gone out into Rotom to threaten him, and uh, we already know that Rotom can live a Dark Pulse, and so I would have been able to easily predict Nidoqueen coming in. But, the way that I played that, now I have to play this 50-50 on if he's going to switch in Nidoqueen or keep in Blastoise, and guess what, he switches in Nidoqueen as I go for a really, really obvious Volt Switch. Again, just not making good plays. Uh, he does one hit KO me with Sludge Wave, which shows that he is more offensive. Unfortunately, he crits my Slow King, which means um, I'm not going to be in a position to take repeated hits from this thing now because I can't. I If I weren't critical hit, then I could have just slack off. Um, if I was able to slack off, I would have had enough HP to live a Dark Pulse from Mega Blastoise because I did have that nice special investment there. And of course, that means that at the very, I would have still lost, but I would have been able to at least swing the differential a lot better. So that's going to be a 4-0 loss. So what what is the what is the takeaway from all this? There are three main takeaways from this that not only I recognize, but I just figured I'd share my thoughts with you all. Number one, losses happen. That's okay. That's not really the issue here. The issue was my mindset. I was so butthurt about my other losses before this. And it was Valentine's Day and nothing in my Valentine's Day planning had worked out and I had to rework all these plans and redo all these reservations and I was just so self-pitiable. It was really sad. And so I let that not only affect my mindset in the battle, but uh, and I think right after the battle finished, my computer crashed. Just, you know, icing on the proverbial cake that was a cake flavor that I didn't like, basically. So it it was just annoying all around. But you can't really let that affect you when you're doing things like when you go to work you kind of have to leave that extraneous things that are bothering you at home at home you can't allow, allow it to affect your performance and here I let it affect my performance number two once you're behind you really have to start making those big plays even though I was behind in this battle there were several opportunities for me to pick up some more momentum just by thinking a little bit more clearly about the plays I was going to make uh, in particular hydro pumping Nidoqueen or you turning on Blastoise. Both of those would have been much more optimal plays that probably would have at least swung me an additional two in the differential, but now I'm ending this at an 0-4 instead of 0-2. Uh, now granted, that's kind of here or there. I could have missed the Hydro Pump on Nidoqueen and I could have gotten the low row on the U-turn, but the point is that I didn't make those good plays and so I suffered because of it. The third point, I do think this is my most important point here, is that I really forgot to have fun in this battle. I kind of forget why I play Pokemon sometimes, especially when being involved in these leagues. And it's a game. You play a game to have fun. That's also why I drafted this team in the first place. I know I didn't draft a what a lot of people would consider, oh, that's a that's a team you would draft in a really competitive league. But between having fun and just enjoying myself, I tend to play a lot better. So when I forget my purpose or the reason I play Pokemon, which is to have fun and really just connect with people in the in the community, that's where you see me playing more poorly. So I, if nothing else, this loss really, uh, 
I, I don't want to say anything cliche here. So the loss was very meaningful and my opponent played brilliantly. Like he prepared really, really well, did not see Gorgeis coming at all. I thought if he brought Gorgeis, he would go with the really, really bulky super size form with Shadow Sneak, if anything. And I had the investment on Chandler to live all but a banded Shadow Sneak. So uh, just really great preparation from him combined with a bad mindset from me led to my eventual downfall. So next week, we are actually going up against the uh, Baron Eunuch, and that means it's shoddy. So what can you look forward to next time from the Eternus and the Enders in the PPL? You can look forward to fun. I'm going to just look at whatever the matchup is, and we're just gonna we're gonna roll with it and have fun, and we're not going to let our mindset get drilled down by a lot of extraneous things that really don't matter in the end anyway. I ended up having a great Valentine's Day. I ended up having a fun battle later on that day with my Powerpuff Girls theme team. It's all good. You just gotta lay back sometimes. Uh, at the end of the day, it's all first world problems anyway. So, if nothing else, I hope you guys took away a little bit of something from this battle video. Don't think that the Eternal City Enders are sleeping for the rest of this season because we will be back and we'll be back with the vengeance. So look forward to next week's video. In the meantime, have a great week, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye now.